what does a geoscientist or somebody in the industry even need a drone for? And the most obvious solutions are, the most obvious needs are for aerial imagery from which we can use photogrammetry to do things such as LIDAR, um, sorry, LIDAR or photogrammetry to do elevation models, which is fantastic, works really well for that. Um, and most of the drones I just showed you are fine examples of instruments that can carry out that work. The more advanced type of needs are hyperspectral imagery, magnetics, and VLF, or very low frequency electromagnetics. And these are where we require heavier, bigger cameras, and in the case of magnetics uh, and VLF, we require a payload to be slung below a drone. And in the case of VLF, it's a very big payload that needs to be slung below a drone, and it's cutting edge technology. So here's a case study. VLF in the northern Yukon. Contacted by a company up there who wanted to fly VLF. Asked if we could do it. We figured out a solution. We made it happen. So here's the specs. We had a bird, uh, the bullet, the thing that hangs below the drone. It was about 13 pounds, a 30-foot cable below the drone. We had to fly 1,000 line kilometers, ranging as far as 3 miles away from the operator. And glaciated steep valley terrain, snow, ice, the whole works. Poor weather, rain, wind. Here's an example of a flight area, just giving an idea about how we lay out a flight strategy. We're trying to cover some known mineral showings, shown here. And it took us about 20 days <laughs> to do this survey, but we had one heck of a time doing it. Here's an example of a, what a flight plan looks like. We take a line, it gets cut up into points. Each one of those points is essentially draped on an elevation model and then we raise it by the above ground level that we need in order to clear obstacles like trees and buildings and things. Here's an example of the support equipment. It is crazy. We've got chargers for batteries and laptops and ways to connect them and radios to talk to the to the people and helicopters that are flying around us and the like. It is uh, a little bit to manage. We learn to keep the batteries warm so one of the most important pieces of support equipment were socks. <laughs> in cold, uh, freezing, or sub-freezing weather, keeping those batteries warm is paramount to long flights. Before each flight, we go through and we would initialize the VLF equipment with the laptop, get it started, turned on, orient it, and then we upload the flight plan to the drone. As you can see here, down in the bottom right, the same laptop connected to the drone, giving it the flight plan, and then we let it take off. It is a thing of majesty if it works right. Here's an example. The drone takes off, hovers, waits to gently lift the payload. Once the payload is lifted, another few seconds, goes up to its operating altitude, and then performs the survey. Here's an example of the survey in progress. You'll have to look really closely at the center to see the drone and the VLF. They're kind of far away from the camera. Now mind you, this is 100% autonomous at this point, and the drone is moving at a speed of about 10 meters a second. So here's a view from the drone. flying over a little bit of uh, some snow and a bit of a permanent ice field right out and over a ridge and back again. Here's another view of a beautiful valley. You can see the extreme topography that we flew in the back. This particular flight was over 700 meters of elevation change from the operator, myself, down in the valley versus over the ridge that you just saw. And here's an example of a perfect landing. The drone slowly descends. Operator, myself, <laughs> catches the VLF then the drone lands itself. Make sure the cord doesn't interfere with the blades. 
And there you go. So there were some issues. Uh, sometimes the elevation models are just flat wrong. And the drone and the VLF will fly at the points that you saw earlier that I've given it. And we go through, we try to automate the creation of those points as much as possible, take the digital elevation, add 40 meters. But sometimes when the elevation models are wrong and the, you're actually flying closer to the ground than you think, as shown here in the photo, the bullet or the VLF geophysics equipment got wrapped up in a tree. And when that happened, we had to go find it. And what we found was an emergency unplanned landing by the drone, broken arm, broken blades, GPS unit broke off, and which all means back to repair. <laughs> this happened a few times, but I bring this up so that you can get an understanding of some of the difficulties that we faced while out there. And then, once it's all repaired, repeat. So, there you go. There's a thousand line kilometers of a drone survey heavy lift uh, in about 15 minutes. <laughs> One more video. Here we go. This was a fun day. This is a no fly day. Too windy. Find me at Ethos Geological. Uh, thanks for attending.